In this video it's down to the beach to see some amazing artworks, put some lighting to the test and capture some great night photos. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post photography tutorials, I share tips and tricks. Occasionally I do gear reviews as well, so if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now I've just returned from a short holiday with family and some friends on the Gold Coast, and this holiday was timed to coincide with a festival called the Swell Sculpture Festival, which takes place on the beach at a place called Corumbin. It's a really great event with up to 50 sculptures on display on the beach. And of course, it's a mecca for photographers. So last year was my first time at the Swell Festival. I had a great time, got some cool photos, and I got there really early for sunrise and made the most of the early morning light. But this year I wanted to try something a little bit different. I wanted to shoot the sculptures at night time. And I wanted to do that for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I hadn't really seen anybody else doing that. Secondly, I thought this would be a good opportunity to test out some portable lighting that I've been sent from LoomCube. So a short while ago, the guys at LoomCube got in touch and asked me if I'd like to test and review some of their lighting. Now I wanna make it clear from the beginning of this video. I am not being paid or sponsored to make this video. LoomCube sent me the lighting, but that's as far as it goes. When I review a product on this channel, I'm gonna give you my honest opinion of it. And that means if I like something, I'm gonna tell you. But if I don't like something, I'm definitely gonna tell you. So the guys at Loom Cube kindly sent me a Panel Go, Panel Mini and a Loom Cube 2.0 kit. Let's start with the Panel Go. So in the box, the Panel Go comes with a USB-C charging cable and a hot shoe mount so you can mount the light on a camera if you wish. The actual unit itself features 112 by color LEDs and is really easy to use. The top button is the on and off button but also doubles as the mode button. So once the unit is turned on, you can then adjust the brightness using the plus or minus buttons. But if you press the mode button a second time, you can now use the plus or minus buttons to adjust the color temperature of the lights. Really easy to use. A nice feature of the Panel Go is the LCD display on the back, particularly when it comes to the battery level, which updates depending on how bright the settings are. As you change the settings, the battery level updates, so you always know how long you got left before you need to recharge. So the Panel Go has a USB-C charging port on the bottom. There's also a quarter inch thread, so you can attach this to any standard tripod. Alternatively, you can use the supplied mount to attach it to the top of your camera. Now this is great for photography and video on the go, or maybe vlogging. Now don't be put off by the compact size of this device. This is a very small compact and light unit that is actually smaller than my iPhone. But despite the small size, it is a really powerful and versatile light. The Panel Mini is of course smaller and more compact and comes with a removable diffuser cover. It features 60 LEDs and works in the same way as the larger Panel Go, with a on and off button that doubles as a mode button plus a toggle switch for adjusting brightness and colour temperature. So one of the best things about the Panel Mini is of course the size. It is really, really tiny. This makes it great for content creators on the move and also vloggers. So the first opportunity I had to use the Panel Go was when I was testing out the Canon R5 for a review here on my YouTube channel. I wanted to get a really nice image of the camera for both my Instagram and for the video. So I was really pleased with the way this image turned out, and especially the soft light from the LoomCube Panel Go. To take this image, I actually took two separate shots, lighting the camera from each side, and then merging the two images to give me one finished image. So the Canon R5 has now gone back to Canon, but I'm very fortunate now to be testing out the Canon EOS R6. Great camera review video coming soon. So once again, I wanted to create some cool content for Instagram. So I did a short little teaser video. I'm gonna show you it. And it was lit solely using the Loom Cube Panel Go.
The teaser video took just a few minutes to make and was really simple to do. I'm just waving the panel mini over the top of the camera. It was the quality of the soft diffuse light that I really loved. So now I want to show you the Loom Cube 2.0, another small, compact, and very versatile light from Loom Cube. It was this that helped me capture this image. Now you will find this sculpture of two pelicans along the Brisbane River, and as you can see, they are not lit. So compared to the very bright background, they are actually very dark. But using the Loom Cube 2.0 and a technique called light painting, I was able to get a couple of nice shots. Now, despite the small size, the Loom Cube 2.0 has an output of 1500 lumens, so it is incredibly bright. A very simple design, just the two buttons, one to power the unit on and off, and then you can use the two buttons to either increase or decrease the power. But for even more options, you can connect this to an app. More on that in just a moment. Now there is a large range of modifiers to fit the Loom Cube 2 with magnets holding everything securely in place plus allowing you to quickly swap and change them. This is a diffusion dome and creates a softer light. And of course, you can also stack multiple accessories to suit your needs. Now this is a very solid and well-built light that is actually waterproof down to 100 feet. Of course, you can attach it to a tripod and if you're using it at full power, expect the battery to last about 30 minutes. But if you drop the power down to 50%, expect about two hours of use. To show you some of the images I took using the Loom Cube 2.0, let's get back down to the beach for the Swell Sculpture Festival. Now it may have been an early start, but just after sunrise is a great time to hit the beach and check out the amazing sculptures. The soft warm light helped me get a few nice shots, but for me, this visit was more about capturing images long after the sun had set and the conditions could not have been better. Now I have to be completely honest with you, I wasn't working in complete darkness. The sculptures were lit anyway, but using the Loom Cube 2.0, I could do things like fill in shadows. I could add color using the color gels. I was able to use this to get the look that I was after. Connect the Loom Cube 2.0 to an app and you can turn it on remotely. You can make adjustments such as brightness. You can also adjust what is called the duration, which has a really cool strobe effect. You can also choose to turn on the red eye reduction and optical trigger. And this means that any other nearby flash unit that fires will trigger the Loom Cube 2 automatically. Now, as you can probably tell from the video, I've really enjoyed using the Loom Cube 2.0, the Panel Mini and the Panel Go. They're easy to use, they're versatile, they're small, they're compact. As a photographer that also makes video content, they have been incredibly useful over the last few weeks. And I can honestly tell you that there are a handful of items that never leave my camera bag. And since receiving these, these have had a permanent place in my camera bag. So thank you, Loom Cube. If you want to find out more about these lighting kits, check out the links below this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel, and don't forget down below you can leave your comments, questions, and suggestions. Hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.